good morning to all today we are going to see an important portion called conditionals already we have discussed this in the classroom so again we are going to see here as a video so basically there are four types of sentences in english it is applicable in all the languages but in english also there are four types they are assertive or we can call it declarative or statement the second type is imperative third type is interrogative or question sentence or last one is exclamatory i hope you remember all the purposes of all these four types of sentences assertive declarative or statement we use such a st- sentence when we state a normal fact when we share an idea so that ends with a full stop the second type imperative we use this type when we share a request or a command in imperative sentences there will not be subject so the subject normally will be you the second person which is understood by the speaker as well as the listener so therefore the subject you is omitted so imperative sentences start with verb third type is interrogative we call it question also interrogative sentence we use to ask questions maybe a son of question or wh question or any type of questions last one is exclamatory exclamatory sentence we use to share our emotions strong feelings now we will uh, actually conditional is part of uh, transformation it comes under a transformation of sentences so for that we should know there are uh, how many types of uh, transformations are happening in english the first one is very basic one from an aff- affirmative sentence type to negative sentence so using different uh, types or uh, different uh, uh, methods you can say that uh, i am coming to college i am not coming to college by adding simply the word not we can change an affirmative sentence to negative or we can say for example he learns hindi this is affirmative sentence to convert this into negative he does not learn hindi so this is how we can change by adding simple word not or using the word never unless seldom there are many words uh, which we gives uh, negation the idea of negation so it is first transformation the second transformation is already you would have studied about this active to passive active voice to passive voice so in active voice the uh, the speaker gives importance to the doer the subject in passive voice action will be given importance so this is active to passive transformation we do uh, and and also vice versa passive to action uh, active uh, reported speech that is also a kind of transformation of sentences from direct to indirect direct speech is nothing but the words of a speaker we use the words of a speaker exactly in a reported speech or indirect speech we use as a third person as a third person we report the words of the speaker to the third person last one is simple compound complex Tra- this is the peak of the transformation from simple to compound we change from compound to complex we transfer transform the sentence now let us come to the components of a sentence what will be there in a sentence 
so before see we these are all uh, a prerequisite to understand conditionals so directly we can talk about uh, the, the types of conditionals but we may not know what exactly a sentence is sentence is nothing but a complete idea so the the first word will be always subject of the sentence about what we are talking or about whom are we talking in the sentence the subject can be a person place or a thing next part is called verb or other than the subject the rest of the past sentence will be called predicate so predicate will have minimum of verb and other components verb denotes action or condition or profession so this verb or predicate will be talking about what is the subject or who is it or what is done by the subject the remaining part of the sentences will be different words answering to the questions where how when and why so for example if you take ramu went it's a very simple sentence ramu is the subject went is the verb so if we want to add the word called college ramu went to college so these answers to the question where ramu went to the college ramu went to the college yesterday ramu went to the college yesterday by train so we can keep on adding lot of uh, words information along with the subject and verb and extend the or lengthen the sentence now let us see a few examples of of uh, simple sentence in a simple sentence there will be a subject and verb and also other information related to the subject's actions so a simple sentence can be called an independent clause also we may call generally main clause independent clause is nothing but main clause a few examples for simple sentence is i go mary chuckled the baby cries see in the first word i go only subject and verb for there mary chuckled the same the baby cries again the same the baby is a subject cries is a verb which talks about the actions of the subject the baby the girl ran into her bedroom the girl is the subject ran is the verb where did he run that's an extra information into her bedroom the dog barked at the cat again we have extra information the dog is the subject the remaining part barked at the cat is called predicate which has verb as well as other information my friend and i went to the beach he here we have a compound subject my friend and i all together is called subject went is the verb to the beach is the place where they where they have they go or they went now we should understand what is phrase and clause because without understanding what they are it's difficult to understand conditionals i think all of us uh, uh, may be aware of what a phrase is and clause but still we should have clarity on it phrase is nothing but group of words which uh, which uh, has a meaning in it but doesn't give a complete sense of a sentence for example the sun rises in the east here in the east is called a phrase the sun rises is a sentence again it has extra information in the east which is nothing but a phrase second example he never he never does anything that is silly here 
that is silly is also a group of words but it is called a clause because clause should have a subject and a verb of its own that is called clause when a clause gives a complete meaning we may call it a main clause or an independent clause or or also a sentence meaningful sentence here this from this example the clause that is silly doesn't give a complete meaning but it has a subject and of its own verb that is the subject is is the verb and silly additional part so we can call it a clause so the second uh, as you did not attend the class class actually as you did not attend the class is also a clause but it has a, a, an incomplete meaning it doesn't end you is a subject did not attend the class is the predicate it is a uh, very worded as a sentence but it has a word as which makes it a clause and incomplete uh, sentence when they were playing in the ground they is a subject were playing in the ground is the predicate but it has a, a conjunction called when which makes it a clause an incomplete meaning so now let us see an example with replacing a noun phrase and clause he has a chain it is a simple a sentence he is the subject has is the verb a chain is the object a chain actually the word chain a noun form now let us see he has a chain of gold we add extra information about the chain and made a uh, make it a phrase chain of gold is a uh, chain of gold is a phrase he has a chain which is made of gold now the same idea is defined in the form of a clause where there is a subject and verb or predicate which is made of gold but it is not a complete sentence it depends the rest of the min- there is a main clause for its a complete meaning which is made of gold is a dependent clause to the main clause he has a chain if it stands alone it does not give meaning so it is a clause subordinating clause we call it now let us see how to follow punctuation when we write a phrase or clause when we start with a phrase or clause to differentiate this part from the rest of the sentence we use comma comma is the separating element see for example in order to satisfy the customers he gave extra discount on products the first section is called phrase in order to satisfy the customers here the main clause is he gave extra discount on products it has the main clause has extra information in the form of phrase when the sentence started with a phrase we separate that section with a comma the second there is another example for the same since i left the college earlier actually it is a clause when the sentence starts with a clause again we separate that clause with a comma and the main clause follows i missed the placement class yesterday since i left the college earlier is the clause i missed the placement class yesterday is the main clause 
now the same 